everyone. We've been studying in our Bibles. We've been studying the book of Genesis. The first verse of the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God made a beautiful world, didn't he? By just speaking it. And he could say, Let there be light, and there was light. And let there be plants, and there were plants. God made a beautiful, beautiful, perfect world. But in God's world, <clears throat> he made man. And he made man with a soul. And he made man to be able to walk with him and talk with him. And to pray to him now. We pray to him to talk to him, don't we? And he talks to us when we hear Sunday school lessons like now. Or when we hear preachers. Or when our parents read us the Word of God, that's how we hear from God. Or if we're old enough, we can read the Word of God. But he made man to fellowship with him and to talk to him. And the world was perfect and wonderful. He would come down every evening and talk to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. It was wonderful. But then sin entered in. We talked about how there was one rule in the garden and that rule was to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but the devil tempted Eve tricked her lied to her and she ate and she gave to Adam and he willingly ate and sin entered into our world Romans 3:23 says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God we're all born sinners ever since Adam and Eve sinned. And sin has brings forth death. They had to kill the little animal. God killed it to make clothes for Adam and Eve and to cover them up. And when Adam and Eve left the garden, he promised them. He promised them he would send a Savior, Jesus Christ. And he shed his blood. He was perfect. He's God's son. He's God. And he shed his blood to forgive our sin. Then we studied the next week about Cain and Abel, the children of Adam and Eve, and how God wanted a blood sacrifice, an animal to be sacrificed, but Cain did it his own way. And he sent, he tried to sacrifice vegetables and worship God. And God didn't like it. God liked Abel's, but not Cain's. And it made Cain wroth, means mad. And God came to him and he said, Now Cain, you could change your mind and you can do right now. And you can repent of your sin and do right. And there's an animal to sacrifice, but he didn't want to. You know, when we sin, the Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, God gave Cain a chance, but he said no. He wanted to do things his own way again, and he was making bad choices. We've been talking about choices. Adam and Eve made a bad choice, and now Cain does. He kills his brother, and he has to be punished, just like Adam and Eve. And he's sent away, and he's punished for the rest of his life because he made the wrong choice. We need to choose to do right, don't we? Not the wrong choices. We have a song that talks about do right, don't we? From the very start, you must purpose in your heart to do what's right and never question why. Never count the cost, though everything seems lost. The price for doing right is sometimes high. Do right till the stars fall. Do right till the last call. Do right when there's no one else to stand by you. Do right when you're all alone do right though it's never known do right since you love the lord do right do right 
Right is always right, and wrong is always wrong, and we must learn to separate the two. If you love the right, the Lord will give you light, so seek the right in everything you do. Do right till the stars fall, do right till the last call. Do right when there's no one else to stand by you. Do right when you're all alone. Do right though it's never known. Do right since you love the Lord. Do right. Do right. Well, God didn't make us robots, did he? He made us to have choices. Well, after Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, the world began to have more and more people. People multiplied upon the earth. But then it was just awful that these people didn't walk with God and talk with God. In Genesis chapter 6, in verse 5, it says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually means they always did wrong. They were doing evil things. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. He was sad that he even made man. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. He's ready to destroy that beautiful creation he made because man has let sin take over. They're not making right choices. But there is one man, one man in his family, Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and Noah walked with God. Wow, praise the Lord for Noah, huh? And his sons were married, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, and they had wives, and he had a wife. And so there were eight people that still worshipped God. Wow, what would God see in us? Would he find us like Noah or like all those other people that were doing evil in the earth? Well, God asked Noah to do something. He asked him to build a big ark, a boat. It was huge. It wasn't little, like these cutesy little things we buy and see. It was big. If you've ever been to Kentucky, I've been there and saw that ark. It's gigantic. It's so huge. Well, do you think that Noah obeyed? It would be a lot of work to build a boat that big, three stories high, and a window and a door. It's huge. Well, Noah did. This says, Noah, the grown-up obeyer. Noah, obeying was hard for Noah. That was a big job. It took him 120 years to build that ark. But obeying was good for him. You think obeying is hard for us sometimes? But it's good for us too, isn't it? So Noah, the Bible says, Genesis 6, 22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He did it. And in <clears throat> Hebrews 7, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He did it. He made the right choice. What if he had told God no? Oh boy, then we all wouldn't be here, would we? He was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. And he used that while he was working on the ark with Shem and Japheth and Ham, people started to gather around. And the people thought he was crazy. Why would he build a big boat like that on dry land? You see, they'd never seen rain. And that's what God had told Noah it was going to do. It was going to rain and it was going to flood. And Noah tried to warn him, you've got to come into the ark with us. Please believe God. And they did it. They laughed and they 
laughed him to scorn, and they didn't believe. Wow, because they had never seen rain, so they didn't believe. That's like people who say, well, I've never seen Jesus or God, so I'm not going to believe. No, blessed are they that have not seen. Yes, that believe. Well, God then told Noah to bring two of every animal, male and female, into the ark with them to keep them alive. And he had to go get the food for them, too. Well, let's see if we have some animals of the ark. It took, I told you it took 120 years to build it. And then Noah got the ark built. There we are. And all the animals, two by two, started to come into the ark. You know, six different times in the scriptures it says male and female. God wanted him to bring a male and a female so that they could have babies when the flood was over. So God didn't have to remake elephants and remake giraffes. He would just, they could do it themselves. We have a Mr. and Mrs. Zebra, and they could have babies. Well, in Genesis 7, 7, it says, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives went with him into the ark. And the animals in two by two unto the ark, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. So they all climbed into the ark. And then, there it was, just sitting there. They all went inside. And God waited seven days. And then, he was hoping some of these people would believe. And then God shut them in. The Bible says, and the Lord shut them in. And it began to rain. Now remember, they'd never seen rain. And it began to rain. And it rained a lot. And the water started coming up. And it began to flood. And the mountains started to get covered. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And up came the water. And only Noah remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark. Isn't that a sad verse? I mean, I'm glad Noah's in there, but only Noah and his family believed? That's so sad. Wow, they were in there a long, long, long time. Longer than you think. It ended up over a year that they were in the ark. And then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. The tops of the mountains could be seen. So now the water's going down after a long, long, long time. And Noah waited 40 more days and he sent out a raven, a little black bird, and he sent out a dove. Good thing he had that little window in the ark, huh? And he sent them out to see if they had anywhere to land, like if there were trees on the top that they could land in. Well, the raven didn't come back because the raven could um, land on things floating in the water and the raven would eat those things. But the dove came back because he doesn't eat those things on load floating on the water. Well, then he waited seven days, Noah, and he sent out the dove again, and the dove came back with an olive leaf in his mouth. So Noah knew that the trees were starting to bud out. So he waited another seven days, and he let the dove out again, and then the dove didn't come back. So Noah knew it was getting close to time to be able to get out of the ark. Well, then God told Noah, go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee, and all the animals and birds, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. That means go have lots of babies, the animals and the people. And God built our Noah, so Noah and the animals came out of the ark. And the Lord, our oh Noah, you know what he did? He didn't get busy building the house or anything. He thanked God. He thanked God for <clears throat> saving them. 
And Noah built it an altar unto the Lord, and he took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So the animals that they offered, he got to take seven of those into the ark so that he would have some to offer to the Lord. And then the Bible says that God sent a bow, or put a bow, no, set, set, set a bow in the clouds to promise that he would never again flood the whole earth and destroy all of man. I love seeing rainbows, don't you? It makes me feel so close to God. Oh, God put a rainbow there. It's very exciting. I'm so glad that Noah obeyed God and he made the right choice, aren't you? Let's sing a song about Noah. God caused the rain to come down, but Noah was safe in the ark. God caused the rain to come down, but Noah was safe in the ark. Elephants, lions, tigers too, monkeys and zebras and kangaroos, horses and cows all two by two were saved in the ark with God. You know, I like the part where it says they were saved in the ark with God. It's because Noah believed God that they were saved. Yeah, it's sad that Noah's family was the only one who was saved. Other people could have gotten into the ark, but they didn't believe. They made the wrong choice, so they died, didn't they? We need to be saved today. Oh, not from... <clears throat> a flood, but our sin causes us to be on our way to hell, and we need to be saved from hell. And the only way to be saved is believing, just like the only way Noah was saved by believing God and moving with fear and preparing the ark. Well, the only way to get away from hell, to, so you don't have to go there, is to believe what? You have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for you and for your sin. And that Jesus was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what we have to believe. We have to make the right choice to be able to know for sure that our sins are forgiven and we'll have a home in heaven. That's the right choice. Have you asked Jesus to be your savior yet? From sin and death and hell? I pray that you will.